Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm so excited because we have our very special guest back. He is Christopher Stilson, and he is a psychic medium. Today, he's going to talk about your psychic self, connecting with your spiritual person within you, and I am so excited. I want you to know that he's part of our podcast community. He has his own podcast, and you can go on his podcast and see all his previous podcasts that he's done with us, and they're amazing. You will get so much out of them. He just taps into so many interesting topics and topics that will just change your outlook on life and your your life overall, your overall wellness and your overall being. So Christopher, tell everybody about a little more about your psychic self and connecting with your psychic person. So uh, first of all, everyone is born psychic. I love to mention that to people because people all the time when they come in, they go, I wish I had the gift that you do, or I wish I could communicate with spirit, and I wish I was guided differently. And I tell them all the time, you do have that gift. You connect with things all the time, but in different ways than personally I would. And what I always like to tell people too is that everyone, it's a God-given gift, first of all. I'm a firm believer in God. You know, to each their own, people can believe in what they believe in. But with my um, life being psychic, I in tune with things differently. And I actually had the opportunity to connect with God once, which was an amazing, amazing um feeling and vibration. And that kind of opened my eyes because I was struggling and um, pushing myself away from the whole God aspect. But yeah. when I had that experience, it truly, truly opened my eyes. Um, so I do say it's a God-given gift. And I always tell people too, it's, it's because God wouldn't just drop you down here saying, good luck, have fun. And it's, it's a cell phone that he gave us to connect with the other side, to continue yeah. to be guided loved and healed and all of that from our true home heaven you know yeah. um and when it comes down to uh people not having this gift anymore it's because of the physical world you know we hear people all the time telling us it isn't real we tell people all the time well we hear people all the time when we're children um say oh it's just your imagination that's not that's not a real thing um religion pushed it away and created something because they wanted more control and they didn't want that spiritual guidance in anybody which is yeah. sad um but it is a God-given gift and we all have it, every single one of us. And I always tell people too, it's like three doors. The first door is completely closed. You don't want to deal with it. You don't want it. You don't want to, um, you're afraid of it. And you'll still get information whether the door shut all the way or not. You just don't connect with it. You just kind of brush it off. Yeah. The second door is like, uh, is halfway cracked open. And that second door that's halfway cracked open is people that in tune into things, but they don't get all the information. They, um, they'll uh, second guess themselves a lot and they feel like they're not doing it correctly. And then the third door is like me who decided to keep it wide open and saying, hey, whoever wants to come in, come in. There's a welcome mat, brush your feet off and come on in and take a seat, yeah. you know, and there was a time where I didn't want to deal with this. I never right. wanted to connect with spirit. And once I did, it was life-changing because they do guide you. They do help you. Um, as a psychic myself, I cannot read my own life. I'm not allowed to read my own life and it irritates the crap out of me. Um, I have argued with Anna before, uh, my spirit guide, where I go, why do you only tell me bits and pieces of things, but you don't give me any more information than that? Or I have to yeah. go out searching for something. And she said to me, well, if you knew everything that was going to happen, would you learn anything from that? Mm -hmm. And that's why we're all here is because we have to learn. So even as a psychic myself, I can't read my own life, but that doesn't mean you can't tune in to be guided. Yes. Now, in a different podcast episode with you, we did talk about our spiritual charts. Mm -hmm. And in our spiritual charts, um, if it says in our spiritual charts that we're not supposed to use our psychic gift the way that I would or, you know, somebody else would, then you're not going to use it. So those right. people that are more in tuned that way, their chart just says it differently. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that you don't have it it just means that 
you're just not supposed to in tune with it as much as I am compared right. to just being guided. Yes. Um, so yeah, so you just have to allow yourself to understand that. You have to allow yourself to understand we're all psychic. We're just psychic in different ways, in different forms. Um, we'll get information differently. And uh, there's five clairs where we, how we get our information. And the clairs come from, it's a French word for clear. And uh, when you add the other word connecting with it, that's what it is. So clairvoyance is clear sight. Mm -hmm. um, clear audience is clear hearing. Yeah. Um, clear condense is clear knowledge. Uh, clairvoyant is clear, did I say clairvoyant already? They all get mixed up sometimes, right? Um, but clairvoyant is clear sight. And then there's a smell and taste one, which I can never remember for some reason. Um, but that's how uh, as a psychic or anyone gets the information. So you yes. either feel things, see things, hear things, um, and that's how we connect with it. Now, the problem though, is that when people do get this information, right. they tend to become afraid of it because they're not used to it. Right. They're not, they're for, from what people tell them, oh, it's not real, I'm crazy. You know, <laughs> um, when you get the information, you're supposed to get the information and that's just how it will be. You're being, mm -hmm. like I said, guided and helped. When I was younger, um, and I didn't want to connect with this uh, this gift at all, I was di I diagnosed myself with schizophrenia. I literally thought I was just hearing voices. I was schizophrenic, and I thought I was just going crazy. But when my spirit guide Anna um, started pushing me a little bit more in the direction of this spiritual stuff, uh, I said, "Well, I'll work with you." if you can tell me what the difference between a schizophrenic is and a <laughs> psychic is, because I need to know. Yeah. And she, with schizophrenia, schizophrenics are usually paranoid. Mm -hmm. So they tend to have anxiety and paranoia connecting right. with the schizophrenia. And I was never paranoid. I just always thought, well, I'm hearing things. I'm crazy, you right. know? Uh, and so that kind of opened my eyes a lot to it too, which allowed me to kind of say, okay, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Um, people tend to kind of stray away from the psych stuff too, because of uh, what they, what they might see. And yeah. we talked about this before too, with the whole demon thing. Um, people think that when they see shadows or, um, figures and things like that, that they're seeing demons and right. demons aren't real. They're not real. And I like to put that out there because my whole life being psychic, I've never seen one, never communicate with one. And you would have to think my whole life being psychic, seeing everybody, talking to everybody, being in different places and houses and buildings, I would have to see someone somewhere, you know, yeah. why would they be in hiding like that my whole entire life? I would have to see something. And um, I like to tell people that it's not, they're not real, that when you do see things that are possibly like that, it could be a tupa, which is a figure of someone's imagination that is projected in a very strong energy and it just creates itself, but it's not harmful. Um, or uh, when you see these shadows and stuff, understand that they could just be loved ones or ghosts. Now there is a difference between ghosts and spirit, obviously. Um, a ghost is someone that has passed mm -hmm. and they didn't cross over to the other side. They're stuck in between. Yeah. 96, 97 percent of the time, they don't even know they're dead. They're wow. very confused. Yeah, it's it's a huge percentage there, but they don't even know they're dead. They they think that they're still alive. They're in their homes. And that's where people come to me and they go, Christopher, you know, I feel very uh, like uneasy there. There's things that will get thrown, you know, there's noises. Well, yeah, you have a, you have a ghost in your house. And when that happens, the ghost can come off as aggressive because they're technically saying, to, they're technically saying, why the hell are you in my house? Why are you invading my space? You know, right they don't even know they're dead. So they think that they're still living in their home. They're still doing their things. They're still, you know, doing what they need to do. And yeah. they question why, why are, why are you here? And so people do get afraid of that and, but they can't hurt you. They can't harm right. you. 
you know, they can't do anything like that. And a spirit is someone that's crossed over, but um, they come back to visit, they come back to help, they come back to guide you, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and there's another podcast episode that we talked about that before too, about the other side and what happens on the other side. So you guys want to go check out those ones too, go for that. You know, mm-hmm. um, but uh, they're they're loved ones usually, and they're very much at peace, and um, they're happy and healthy, uh, with beautiful energies, um, and with angels as well. I love to bring up angels. Angels are very powerful, and people at the time go, "Oh, my grandma's an angel. My my uncle's an angel." Sadly, no. Um, you know, we, our loved ones become spirit, they become energy, but we don't get wings when we cross over to the other side. We don't fly around on clouds and, you know, play a harp the whole time. Um, but when it comes down to angels, angels were entities created by God as messengers, healers, helpers, and more guidance. So God created these entities and they've never been in a human form before you know they've never created a life like we have and come here um they have they have manipulated themselves to create themselves into a human form here and there if someone in the physical world is struggling and need their help with something but it's usually not for a long time it's you know 10 minutes you know or a little bit more possibly a little bit less possibly but they won't take form forever um and that's that's if people need help here um they do have wings angels do have wings but they do not fly with them and when I first heard that I was kind of irritated because I'm like (laughs) you know if I was an angel I would want to take off with these wings I would want to go uh but apparently from my understanding is that the wings of an angel are actually the badges of angels. And whatever color these wings are, depends on what level angel they are, because there's different um, levels of angels. There are the angels, the archangels, the cherubim, the cherubim, the um, seraphim, the thrones, the principalities. And so, you know, if they're regular angels, they usually tend to have, um, white wings and uh if you go up one to the archangels i believe they're the ones that have the white wings but with a um with like a silver tr- like silver trim look to the bottom of it yeah um and then you the other one it's white wings with a with a gold trim and then there's gold wings so it goes it goes on and on um depending on what level they are and so you can actually see angels too as a psychic. I have come across a few myself. Um, it's funny because from my studies too, angels will stand always at someone's front door. So every single house has an angel that stands at the front door to protect them. Um, but uh, they do like there's things that they'll, they'll move and go and whatnot. Angels are androgynous, so they don't have um, the female or male um, reproduction reproduction system, obviously. Um, They can seem to be more female or male as like the the way their facial structure is or the hair and things like that. Um, But they tend to be um, really, they don't have, they don't have a sex. They don't, you know, connect that way. when I see angels, I'll see them in slight beams of light. Orbs, orbs are always angels. So when you see an- when you see the orbs, they're always angels around you. Um, but when you connect with them, it is beautiful. The vibrance, um, the vibrant energy from angels are at a high level. Like you feel on top of the world when you connect with angelic energy, wow. and it's it's a beautiful beautiful thing i remember when my grandfather burns uh he passed when he passed away when he was passing away i don't like to watch people pass i'm not one to sit there be like oh i have to be there by their bedside i can't do it i can talk to dead people i don't want to watch people die um it's you know not my cup of tea and when he was passing it was a uh, it was a monday um 
when Anna told me, well, you need to go see your grandfather. I said, I'm not going to see him. I said, he can come to me when he's gone over there, but I'm not coming to see him. I'm not going to see him. Well, she left it alone for a little bit. But then that Friday, she said it again. She goes, you need to go see your grandfather. And I said, well, why do I have to go see my grandpa? I don't, I don't want to. Why would I have to? And yeah. she says, well, he's waiting for you. He wants to see you before he goes. And I said, fine. If you have to put it that way, I guess I'll, you know, go and, and visit. And I love him dearly. So don't think that I'm not saying, like, I'm saying out of uh, anger or anything like that. But I just can't, I can't be there during that situation. Right. Um, so I did. I went on a Sunday. I went that Sunday. And when I entered that room and sat down and I was looking around, I could see a few of his loved ones that were standing around the bed because he was on his deathbed. He was, he couldn't speak and stuff, but his loved ones in the room, but you could see angels surrounding him as well. Yeah. And when you see these angels surrounding him and you could feel the energy, it felt like heaven's gates opened and I was standing right in front of it, feeling all the energy come in. Yeah. Uh, it was it was powerful and just gorgeous. So angels are always going to be part of everything that we do. You know, they connect with everything that we do. And um, as a psychic in your psychic self, you can be guided by them. You can get help with healing by them and other things like that too. Now our loved ones, they can help guide us. They can help connect with us and um, help healing in certain ways where if they see you going through a certain, certain uh, problem, they can send angels. They can go get them and say, hey, I need an extra angel. Can you go down there to my grandson or can you go do this or that? So they can definitely do help too. But when you start connecting with these loved ones, these angels and spirit and all of that, you tend to see life differently. You don't see life as I'm here. Why the hell am I continuing to do this? And, you know, you, you sort of cherish life a little bit more and yeah. You know, I, I always joke with people and say, I can't wait to go home because I can't, you know, I'm here for a reason. I love my life. I love helping other people. But from what I see here, feel and whatnot from the other side, I can't wait to go home. Yeah. But I do love my life. I love the connection with what I do and things like that. So you start to see more of an opening with that. You start to see what you can do with it differently. And when you're struggling with things as well, you can ask them for help. They're there to guide you. They're there to love you. People don't do that. People don't right. think, oh, my grandma's over there. Let me ask for help. They just go, oh, God, I'm struggling. What's the problem? Yeah. You know, and when you start connecting when, with, with your loved ones and um, you can ask them specific things to do to help guide you. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, grandpa, I want you to drop three pennies in a row at the same time for me, place them somewhere. And as, as soon as I can, you'll come across those three pennies. Right. You know, you'll see the three pennies. You'll, you know, you can always ask them to people all the time. This is the problem. They, when they come to me, they go, well, Chris, I, I really want to dream about my mom. I really want to dream about my grandpa. You know, I want to dream about them, but I never can. And I look at them and I, first of all, I have to laugh because Anna always says, well, they can't because they can't remember their dreams and because their brains will be too chaotic. So I have yeah. to tell them to relax, but you know, um, but uh, you can always say to your loved ones, I want to see you come to me in a dream, come to me in a dream, come to me in a dream. And three, four days down the line, even the next night, you may see them in a dream because you yeah. asked for it. And a spirit rule is if you don't ask, then they can't do, you right. know, people go, well, help me, help me, help me. And your loved ones are looking at you going, help you what? What yeah. do you, what, what, what do you need help with? Yeah. And so you have to be, you have to be specific. You have to tell them what you want help with, what you need that right. connection with. Yeah. Um, and uh, allowing yourself to relax is the big, the most important part of being psychic. Whenever yes. I do readings, I am in a meditated kind of trance doing that with readings. Um, all psychics tend to be because the more relaxed you are, the more information psychically you will get. Yes. You know, when you're focusing too much on the physical world crap that you're dealing with and the stress, the worry, the anxiety, you're not becoming guided. You're not. Mm -hmm 
you can't because you're too earthbound. Right. But when you let go of those earthly things, it allows you to connect with spirit more. It allows you to allow spirit in. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is too, is that uh, when, when I talk to Anna, um, she's the only one that I ask for me to hear. Uh, so I allow everyone else's loved ones when they talk to me to send me pictures, images in my head um, mm -hmm. of what they want to talk about or make me feel what they want to talk about. But Anna's the only one that I'll hear. Once in a while, loved ones will chime in and it's really annoying. Um, but they come from a higher frequency. So their voice, Anna's voice will sound like Elvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> Yeah, can you imagine you're sitting here and all you hear is like in three voices or four voices? That's why I feel like I was crazy more than half the time, mm -hmm. you know? So um, because they are at a higher frequency, they'll come in and uh, kind of chirp. And uh, that's why I only allow Anna to connect with me through the clear audience. Um, there are times when I do bring that up and people talk about, well, I heard things clear as day when I was falling asleep once and I go yeah because you're so relaxed at that time you're hearing it clearly you know right. when you're right about to doze off you're going into the subconscious state of mind you are relaxed enough you're hearing it clearly yes. you know I can't fall asleep during my readings I have to be somewhat in the physical world you know yep. so mm -hmm. that's why it sounds like a chirp that's why it sounds like the 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 Elvin and the Chipmunks. I'm waiting for her to sing to me one day to see if it sounds just like them, you know. <laughs> but but uh, she uh, she's a wonderful person, and with spirit guides too. Um, obviously, their job is to guide you. That's what they're here for, and yeah. that's why I always tell people connecting with the other side your spirit guide knows more about you than you know about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's very important to connect with them because when you connect with them, you're being pushed in that, um, that spiritual area that, that um, to make life easier for you in, in a sort of way. And yeah. remember too, that connecting with spirit is 33.3% .3 of manifesting. That's your, that's your heaven luck. You're connecting with it. Yeah. Um, so uh, always try to connect with your spirit guide and people all the time go, well, I, you know, I think my spirit guides, my mom, my grandma, or, you know, no, you know, who guided you to the day they died? You know, you'd have to have someone there. So you have a primary spirit guide, which is mine's Anna. And she, I'd never met her in the physical world. She's always been on the other side. Um, but that doesn't mean your loved ones can't help. They do help. Yeah. And they want to help. They want to make sure you're doing well and, you know, succeeding and things like that, too. Um, there's, there's an area, too, where we discussed before with uh, evil people. Because we talked about demons before where demons don't exist. But how mm -hmm. people are really the evil ones. There's people in the physical world that lost their way completely, such as Jeffrey Dahmer, Adolf Hitler, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. And people at the time go, well, why weren't they guided? Why weren't they helped? If we're all born psychically, then why is it that, you know, they didn't have that gift because they did what they did? Yeah. Well, they were born gifted. Everybody is. But sadly, human ego gets in the way. Mm -hmm. That is another big problem. When you have human ego, you're yeah. pretty much saying, screw that spiritual stuff. I'm just going to do what I want to do because I want what I want. And I, I'm going to go after it. I'm going to yeah. do what I want to do. Um, and, you know, sometimes their mindsets and just not in the right place. You know, there's yeah. obviously, there's obviously um, in the physical world, mental health issues as well that, right. you know, we don't want to push that off at all because people go, well, everything that some people do is all a spiritual excuse, isn't it? No, there's physical world things that can occur and we need to be aware of that. You can't blame everything on spirit. What the hell did they do to you? You know, it's not their fault. Yeah. You know, they, 
but yeah, so they, they lose their way. They become more physical world bound by having that ego, that, okay. that human ego. And that causes that twist and turn and they turn their back on spirit and they just go, I'm off. And they do what they want to do. Now that doesn't mean that their spirit guides standing there doing nothing. Their spirit guides probably screaming at them like, hello, stop. Mm -hmm. Right. But then once they, once they pass, they don't get to cross over. Sadly, they go right back in the womb and they're reborn again. And once that happens, they don't have a spirit guide anymore. They don't have loved ones on their side anymore that want to guide them, or they may even have past life loved ones, obviously that may want to help, but who knows how much they can do with them not listening. So pretty much when they, when you come back a second time as that evil person, because you just recycle now at that point, um, you, uh, you lost everything. You just lost everything. And it's it's sad because the world should just be connecting in that positive way of spirit. You know, if, if everyone would connect with spirit more, I feel like this world would be a better place, to be honest. Oh, you know, and I'm not talking about like religious connect with spirit, because like I said, I'm a firm believer in God. But I believe yeah. that a lot of religion in itself has been corrupted and mm-hmm. has been made for control. But oh. at the same time, if you connected yourself now there is a rule that says do as you wish just do no harm Mm -hmm. so as long as you're being happy living happy and not hurting people or harming others in any way you're fine you're fine Mm -hmm. you know and and also you know we come here we learn and then we shut up and go home you know that's just how it works and that's why i always tell people what is there really to stress about what is there really to worry about because Mm -hmm. in reality you're going to go home. You're going to cross over and everything you're going through now is just temporary. Right. And when you don't worry about things, you connect with spirit better. You, you get to rise to that spiritual self that you truly are. Right. You know, a lot of people too tend to hold onto their past a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's another reason why people don't connect with spirit as much because they're so anchored by the negativity of their past yeah and um one thing that i heard from a friend of mine who i love dearly she said you know that she was having a conversation with with with, uh bob proctor and she was bringing up her past a lot and bob said well are you going to keep living that are you gonna rewrite it now Mm-hmm. And when she said that, that hit me hard, you know, yeah. and I'm not one, I don't like to hold on to things, but that definitely hit me hard. Yeah. And that what got, that's what got me thinking, going, wow, the people that hold on to that, they're past a lot and they keep reliving that stuff. They're not allowing spirit to guide them. They're not opening up to that channel. Mm-hmm. And it's sad. It's truly sad. Yeah. So and you have to let go of it all. You have to forgive, let go, you know, and forgiveness is not, and this is one thing I do like to mention, forgiveness is not about forgiving the other person for the other person. Forgiveness is about you. It's about forgiving the person for you. It's not about helping them. And you don't have to forgive someone to their face, write a damn letter and burn it and throw it away, whatever you want to do. Right. Release it that way, but you don't need to hold on to it. Don't yes. need to hold on to it. Um intuition as well with people because people tell me all the time well I'm very intuitive I'm very intuitive I love when people are intuitive that's one of the that's one of the strongest clairs because that connects with the clairsentience a lot of people are clairsentient which Mm -hmm. is uh clear feeling you feel things you connect with the feeling of things and the intuition comes from that what I love about intuition is it's actually God talking to you and I find that to be very powerful because yeah. when you're praying, you're talking to God. When you right. hear your intuition, that's God talking back. That's yeah. God connecting. And that makes it so much stronger to validate that psychic sense of things. Right. That it's a very powerful thing. Now, when I first 
when I, well, I was, it was when I first, it was when I was connecting fully with spirit, but I was still trying to dabble in my studies and understanding of how it works, why I do what I do, which don't ever try because everyone's born psychic. There's not a direct way for everyone to know why they do what they're doing. You're born that way. Yes. Um, but I was going through some depression areas and stuff and I was, I was very depressed. And I was sitting there in my, in my bedroom, you know, I had um, blackout curtains on the windows. It was just pitch black in my room. You couldn't see anything. Yeah. And I, and I was sitting there in front of my door, not looking at the door. I was looking at my room, but like my back was against the door and I was just kind of just taking some deep breaths. And all of a sudden this room, my room just got brighter. Mm-hmm. Just as bright. And I don't even know. I can't even explain how bright it got. Yeah. And all I heard was, you will be okay. You have a lot, a, a lot of work to do here. Mm-hmm. And all of a, it just dimmed down and went away. And the way I felt was complete pure love, um, happiness, mm-hmm. and kind of like when a baby is being held in a mother's arms, they feel that like safety type feeling. I felt that. And I said to Anna, I said, Anna, what the hell was that? Like, what in the world just have you, for crying out loud, I already think I'm crazy. This is just like the icing on the cake at this point, you know? <laughs> and and uh, she goes, it was God. That was mm-hmm. God coming to communicate with you and helping you understand. And I never felt that before. Never felt that before. I find it funny though, because I always ask, I always ask, I said, Anna, I always ask Anna questions, period. But I I said, I said to her, what is it? Like, is there something, is there times where you're not listening to me? Like, Mm -hmm. is there times where you're you're just not at all paying attention? And she goes, when you're praying. And I go, what? She (laughs) goes, whenever you're praying, whenever anyone prays, their loved ones, and if there's loved ones around them, their loved ones and their spirit guides will step away because yeah. praying is an intimate thing between you and God. So we only allow you and God to communicate. We don't know anything about your prayers unless you talk to us about your prayers, but right. they don't know anything about that. They, 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 they allow that connection with just God in that right. area. But then they're always around you no matter what after that. You know, they're, they're always listening and things like that too. Um, th- that reminds me, I do want to jump into privacy here because a lot of people, and I, I laugh all the time at this because a lot of people always question, Christopher, well, I'm doing the deed. Are they standing there watching or, you know, are they <laughs> there or when I'm going to the bathroom and I'm taking a shower, you know, first of all, no. Why would anyone want to watch that? You know, <laughs> like not even spirit wants to watch that. Right. Um, it's not like they go, oh, the episode's on. Let's get some popcorn. You know, <laughs> let's, let's now. Um, but like they they'll pop in. But if you're in a private moment, they pop back out. They instantly go, oh, so it's kind of like if you're doing the deed and someone walked in your bedroom real quick and they shut the door like, oh, God, sorry. That's exactly yeah. what it still is because they pop yeah. in going, oh, sorry. You know, mm-hmm. they, don't, they don't sit there and watch. They allow you to still have your privacy. You know, they allow you to um, have that feel of safety when you're doing those like either intimate things or going to the bathroom or taking a shower. There yeah. are times, though, that when I am in the shower, I will talk to Anna a lot in the shower. Water is a very strong element for spirits, water and electricity. So it's a good time to talk to spirit while you're in the shower as the water's running on you mm-hmm. um, because it will allow you to help connect with them stronger and you'll hear it stronger. But she doesn't stand in the shower with me. So don't think that your loved ones or whatever is standing in the shower. They just stand on the opposite side of the shower curtain. So they're right. still giving the privacy, but they're just talking to you on the other side um, yes. of the shower curtain. And I've had incidents with that where I'll, I'll take a shower and I'll hear Christopher and I, I'll poke my head out of the shower and my grandfather will be standing there, like still give me privacy, but just saying, Hey, I'm here. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well I'm trying to wash right now and you can, you know, don't bother me right now. 
Um, mm -hmm. But yes, they, anything that's private, anything like that, they're not around. They're not going to be stumbling in and just, you know, like I said, eating popcorn or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but they will allow that privacy to still be private. Um, but allowing yourself just to understand that they're always around you still, you know. Our loved ones, too, and I believe we talked about this in um, one of the podcast episodes that we had where, the, where we talk about spirit and the other side, that um, the longer they're over there, the more distance they become from the physical world. So when you're trying to connect psychically and spiritually with your loved ones and you're not getting answers right away, mm -hmm. well, think about how long they've been over there. If they've been over there for 10 years, maybe they're just too damn busy for you right now. They'll come when they want to come. Right. You know, so they get busy over there and they do things and they know time's different over there. So when you, when you're here for another 40 years, it could be like two years to them or uh, three seconds to them. Yeah. And why would they want to be up your butt for three seconds when they're going to see you in three seconds, mm -hmm. you know? So you have to think about it that way too, but they're still going to guide you when you need it the most. So when you call upon them for actual help, You'll get those signs. That's why people go, well, I didn't see a sign for anything. But then a week later, I finally seen something going, oh, that's from my grandpa. I know that's that sign that I asked for. Well, yeah, yeah. because they're busy over there. They'll send you the sign when, they're, when they can. Right. You know, it's kind of like when you send a text message out and you'll get a reply for like two days. And then, you know, two days later, you get a reply and you're like, oh, that took forever. Well, yeah, we're all human. We're all busy. Yeah. You know, that's the same thing with spirit. They're busy over there. Mm -hmm. So... Allowing yourself to just connect with with spirit is the best thing ever. And I, I really think, too, um, working on relaxation, working on relaxing the mind and body is very important, like I said. Um, connecting with the clairs. What ones are you best with? Everyone connects with every single clair, but some are stronger than others. So my... Um, clairvoyance my clear audience my clear sentience and clear comments is a lot stronger than my smell and taste you know mm -hmm. um i rarely will smell and taste things um right. but there's some people that will just smell and taste things and can't do the rest of them or whatever so you want to make sure and you can always work on them too like a like a muscle to make them stronger mm -hmm. um but that's where you just have to um Practice. Practice makes perfect. You know, practice makes perfect. Um, so you can always do that. And uh, allow the information to come in, but don't second guess it. That's like another rule. You don't want to second guess it. And spirit won't say anything mean or terrible. So they're not going to sit there and say, they're dying in seven days. Make sure you tell them they're dying in seven days. They don't say things like that. You know, yeah. they don't. But they'll give you information on certain things like uh, um, your your life and things like that, or for other people. Another thing that Anna has always told me too, is if you don't ask, and I think I mentioned this a little bit ago, if you don't ask, you won't get answers. Right. So if you want to test your psychic self, you can look at a friend of yours and go, well, how is this person's health? And just sit yeah. there quietly and you'll get like, their kidneys are messed up. And right. A week later, they go, hey, I have to go to the doctors. There's something wrong with my kidney. And you go, there you go. Right. You know? And that's how I do my readings is when I ask questions, when, I read, when I'm reading people, I go down a line, a list. I go, well, how's this person's health? Then Anna will give me all the information. I relay that information. Well, how's this person's career? How's this person's finances? How's this person's relationship? How's this person's personal life? And is there any loved ones here that want to talk to this person? And when right. I ask those questions, that's when I'll start to get the answers. Yes. And that's how I psychically connect with everything is through asking questions. If you don't ask, people all the time go, well, I, I'm not getting information. Well, have you asked them anything? Have you, right. you know, people go to, I don't think my loved ones are listening to me. Have you talked to them? Well, no, I'm just waiting for a sign they're not going to just show you anything. What do you need to sign for, for crying out loud? Exactly. You know? And be specific too. Very specific. Spirit is specific energy, but our spirit guides are more specific than our loved ones are. Um, mm -hmm. They're trained to be like that. So I, I once asked my spirit guide, 
can you describe yourself to me, please? And she goes, yes. And I go, well, why aren't you describing yourself? She goes, because you asked if I can. You didn't ask me to. Ah. So you have to be very specific with your spirit guides. Mm -hmm. Very specific. But yeah, I mean, that's, people think all the time, I have to go out and dance underneath the full moon or, you know, I have to drink uh, water for 12 days to clear up my system to communicate with spirit. No, people, people make it more difficult than it really is really because right. everyone has the gift. You just have to talk and relax. You'll get the information, right? You don't have to make it so difficult. That's why I can't, you know, I'm a very blunt psychic. But I can't stand those people out there that go, oh, well, if you want to connect with spirit, you know, you have to you know, uh, meditate for 12 days and really get relaxed. And then you have to go dance underneath the full moon and you have to make sure you're burning this in that corner and, you know, saging your house all the time. Why? Why does someone have to do all that to communicate with somebody that they already can do? Your gift is right. already there. You just need to advance it. Yeah. You need to make it happen. Right. You know, it's a, it's a muscle. That's what it is. It's a muscle that you can make stronger. You know, I always tell, I always joke around and say, my stupid ass always made it stronger for some reason. They want to shut off. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. I really wouldn't. I, I, I love the gift of, of being able to connect with the spiritual world. And for people who want, you know, there's so many different types. If there's a certain type that maybe someone wants to get stronger in, is yeah. there any suggestions? Like, you know, there are certain, certain, um, there are certain um, types of psychicness that I know that I'm very strong in. And there are certain types that I know that I have some, but not a lot of, but I want to enhance those areas. Like, how do you do that? Like there's, there's certain areas you really want to make stronger how do you do that? So it, like I said, it's like a muscle, but for example, you have to ask yourself why that one may not be stronger mm -hmm. because some people use it as like, well, I don't want to see anything. I'm afraid of it. Yeah. You know, and that's why it's shut off, but then they want to get into it and they go, well, I, I, I can't get into it. Like, you know, I'll see shadows here and there, but I don't see anything fully. Well, yeah, because you're still afraid of it because you're afraid of what you might see. So you're yeah. blocking that out. So you have to really understand like what, what's making it so you're afraid of it uh, with the, what's the fear base, you know, you're programmed to through it. Well, I like what, you know, and I'm, I'm, I always study so much. I love to study. That's my problem. I, it's, a, it's an addiction to be honest. Um, <laughs> but uh Studying is a very big thing. And I have studied Bob Proctor's work. And Bob Proctor talks about paradigms a lot, which are, you know, habits that are formed. And you're usually programmed with these habits. That's what a, that paradigm is, is a programming thing a habit. Mm -hmm. But you're usually programmed with these habits by childhood. So yes. when you see things like scary movies or um, your, your, your parents are talking bad about psychics and yada, 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 you're then programmed with that paradigm. And yeah. even though you may want to step out of that and, you know, connect with it, the paradigm is mm -hmm. going to stop you because yeah. you're programmed. So you have to change the paradigm by understanding nothing's going to hurt you. There's no mm -hmm. such thing as demons. Those things yeah. you see in movies, I laugh about all the time. I, I haven't watched a scary movie in a while, but just because yeah. it does affect your energy watching it because it puts you does in a vibration. It? Yeah. So people don't know that they go, well, I love scary movies. Well, that's why you always feel depressed because your vibration is lower when you're having anxiety and you know, yeah. and you're causing more of that. Um, yeah. So I kind of stepped away from scary movies. I love scary movies just because I love to laugh at them. They're more comical for me. Cause I'm like, that can't happen. That's yeah. not, that's not real. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you have to understand that, there, that nothing like that's going to happen at all. You know, you're not going to get possessed. You're not going to start floating and speaking Latin for crying out loud. Yeah. You know, 
and things like that too. And possession, to be very blunt, like I always am, possession is a mental illness. It's really not happening. It's it's right. a mental illness. You know, those are things that we have to think and focus on is that what's real and what's not real. And right. that's another thing too, is when I tell people and teach people these things, I tell them, take what, with, 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 Sylvia Brown says this a lot, and that's where I got it from. Take what you want and leave the rest behind. You know, yeah. you don't have to believe everything that I say. You don't have to take everything that I say into accountability. Yeah. But you know that there's things that I'm going to talk about that may hit you heavy in the heart going, I know that. I feel that. I know that's real. Yeah. But it's this human, the human crap of the paradigms, the programs, all of that, that are causing a lot of people to step out of that psychic sense. Yeah. So, makes- but yeah, circling back to the question, you just need to work on it and figure out what you're afraid of for it. You know, even with a clear audience, why am I afraid of hearing things? Am I afraid that I'm going to, you know, hear something that I don't want? Am I afraid of just hearing things that creep me out? You know, um, and like I said, most everyone is clairsentient. That's one thing that not a lot of people turn off at all. People will yeah. have a lower kind of sense to it. Some people have a higher sense to it. Yeah. Um, so there's that. But there's just, you have to figure out what 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 is causing you to block that clear. That's what. Right. It is. That makes sense. That makes sense. I've had people like come to me and they say, well, you know, I haven't, you know, ever since so-and-so has passed, I haven't seen them in my dreams, you know, that they don't feel like they come to me. I don't understand, you know, and I guess the best thing, you know, you would say to do for for them is just to relax, relax. But what, but think too, what is blocking that? Because Fear could be blocking that, but I'm loving that you're bringing that up because one of the biggest reasons that people, when once someone passes, people don't see their loved ones right away is due to grief. Grief Mm -hmm. is one of the biggest blocks to a loved one on the other side, because when you're grieving, it's like blinders, you know, you're going through the process of grief, but you don't want to validate their dead. So you're right. trying so hard to just think, oh, they're in the hospital. Oh, they're they're still home. They're fine. Because your brain's trying to say, they're good. They're good. They're fine. And in reality, they've crossed over. And yeah. you are blocking that out because you just don't want to get that information. Another right. thing is, too, about dreams. And I'm very happy you brought that up, like I said. But with dreams, people ask to project a lot during sleep. Usually it happens two to three times a week. And Mm -hmm. when this happens, most of the time you will travel to the other side and you will visit your loved ones that are over there and you will hang out with them for a little bit. The sad part is, is that you're not allowed to remember anything that happens over there. So when you come back here, you wake up and you go, I know I dreamt something. I just can't remember what it was. Right. And 95% of the time it's because you crossed over the other side and you were visiting a loved one. That's happened to me so many times. It happens to me when, before I wake up, like a lot of times it wouldn't be when I'm in a, like a deep sleep at nighttime. It'll be, it'll be before I wake up, like I'll feel a presence, you know, and I'll feel many times I felt like the person was sitting right by my bedside talking in my ear and I could hear them. Clearly. I mean, I could hear their voice like they were just speaking in the room to me and it wasn't, it wasn't a, it didn't feel like a dream. I know it wasn't a dream. It just felt so real, you know, and I, you know, is that common for a lot of people? Well, I wouldn't say a lot. Um, Like I said before, when you're in that relaxing subconscious still, yeah. You are going to connect stronger with spirit. Um, but it's not like everybody does that. You know, yeah. I mean, for crying out loud, I do it because I just do it normally anyways. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not surprised with you that you do it because you are very sensitive to spirit. And mm-hmm. with you, you tend to, when you're awake, you are like in you you're like what I call ADHD brain where <laughs> you're thinking of 3,000 things at one time do you understand what I mean like you're oh, in I do. 
That is yeah. me. And when you do that, you're kind of blocking spirit out. So your loved ones know when she's sleeping, I'm going to get her. I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to talk <laughs> to her. And that's when they try to be the loudest for you because you, that's when you're most relaxed. Right. Yeah. Is music a good way to get a person relaxed as a form of, uh, you know, to, but like maybe to to put relaxing music that would get them in a form of calmness and maybe then shut the music off or maybe they can keep the music on, but maybe, you know, then what could they, could they do afterwards once they feel that, that sense of complete calmness? So once you start feeling that calmness, now music does help a lot, depending on the music, obviously you want something very down to earth very mild tone I always tell people put like the hertz music on like the vibrational okay. music um, yeah. find one that you like I love the sound of wind chimes so sometimes I'll play just like wind chime background sounds yeah, yeah, um, yeah. when I want to relax but um once you're in that state of relaxing just start asking questions and once you start getting that information write it down you know you may say how is this person's health and then you may get, you know, um, their their kidneys, for example. Okay, write down kidneys. And mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, their their left knee, left knee, you know, things like that. And you just want to write it down. And then talk to the person. Well, how have you been doing? And they go, Well, my left knee's been hurting terribly. Well, yeah. you already knew that, didn't you? See, that's how it works. So that's what I suggest doing is just start asking those questions. Yeah. And then when, when you, it's probably good to keep a psychic journal, I think too, you know, like oh. in, in a, you know, to, to yeah. gather information, right? Yeah. Even through dreams, a uh, dream journal, and even the psychic journal, sit there and just write down, you know, how you feel, what you feel and all of that, because in reality, that will help connect you with the validation because yeah. I always tell people before you start going into the zone on the top corner, write the date and the time. And then when you write the date and time, um, that's when you uh, can um, start channeling. And when you start channeling and then you put the book up and then you hear something, your mom might say it, grandma, a coworker. Then you go back and you open the book and you go, oh, that's right. I wrote that at this time on this day. And that validates it for you. The more validation you have, the more belief you have for yourself. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's very true. That's a great idea. I like that. I like that. And there's, is there any type of things people can do at nighttime if they want to connect with people? Is there anything that would help them connect? Now, you said to call out to them like yeah. it'll say go into bed and I really want to connect with so and so and I would really love to see them in a dream I'd really love to communicate with them what should someone do so you want to call out to them you want to say hey grandma I want to I want you to visit me while I'm sleeping mom I want you to visit me while I'm sleeping I always always like to ask God as well to say God help me relax enough to be able to visit them yeah you know take away my worries and fears and all of that and help me relax enough to visit them for them to visit. Um, and then you might start getting information as you doze off where you may hear something, you may see something um, and things like that. And keeping that dream journal or psychic journal next to you during that too is always good. Yeah. Um, and uh, just allowing yourself to not second guess it you know, right. just let it be. And you'll start to see things differently when it comes down to that. So if you want to call upon someone at night, just do it. You know, it. it may take a couple of days because like yeah. I said, they have things to do over there. So do it for three days in a row and the fourth day might happen, you know, right. um, exactly. but spirit always says to be patient. Being human is the worst thing. Telling a human <laughs> to be patient is like the worst thing to ever say to Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I can't, when Anna says to me, Christopher, you have to be patient, it's coming. Excuse the hell out of you, Anna. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you have no time over there. I have no time here to wait. You know, like. Yeah. I, but, Lord, now we know Flo's particularly said that, but yeah, um, she, uh, she'll she say that. And I'm just like, no, I don't want to, but. Yeah. yeah. 
but yeah, just be patient. Things will happen. Things will, things will come in and connect, you know, right. um, you'll start to see things and stuff too. Uh, with the whole, Anna's bringing it up, but um, because she's talking right now, but um, the white noise, people at time talk about white noise. You don't, first of all, I don't know what it is, but white noise creeps me out. I can't do the white noise. I don't like listening to it. It makes me feel very nauseous. Don't know what it's about for that. But what is white I, noise? The white noise is like the static electricity where you see on like TVs where it goes, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's white noise. So you can like play that in the background. And usually when you play white noise in the background, you hear voices come out of it. Oh, really? um, which is very to me like I don't even want to deal with it if I can hear it already I don't want to hear it through a box um but uh what I always tell people and I've actually learned this through uh Sylvia which I found very interesting is um put a recording device in your kitchen or your living room or whatever and don't put it next to your bedside because then you don't want to sleep you want to keep playing it over again to see if you got anything yeah. but put it away from you put one outside of your room and press record and then in the morning rewind it and play it through and just listen to it because what happens is your loved ones can pop in to give you a message to the recording device yeah so you might want to do that too oh wow yeah that's very cool i like that yeah now with today's show if you had to take everything we talked about today and you had to give people a few takeaways what would you like to emphasize uh, relax the mind and body. I know being human is very hard, but the more relaxed you are, the more information you get. Ask questions or you won't get answers. Mm -hmm. And don't second guess yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't second guess yourself. You know, there's some people that will say things. And even, even me, as I do readings, I'll say things. But someone will go, no, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. I don't second guess myself. I just go, okay, well, put that in the back of your mind. If it, you know, if it yes. validates something later, then it'll be later. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people will message me a few days after the reading going, oh my God, that was Uncle John. I forgot all about Uncle John. Right. Or they'll, if I predict things for the future, they go, no, no I don't see that happening. And a year later, they'll message you going, guess what's happening right now? So, you know, just because you say things doesn't mean it's supposed to be known at that time. Right. Exactly. So you don't have to second guess yourself. Yeah. And people have said that too. People have said, you know, they have been told things. It didn't make sense to them. Yeah. Then later on, they were like, oh my God, you know, this just happened to me. Now I understand, you know, yeah. and, uh, yeah. So that's really good advice. Yeah. Now, when people want to contact you, where should they go to, to, you know, contact you if they want to read in or if they want to talk to you or if they have questions? So they can always visit my website, ChristopherStilson.com. Um, all the information's on there, um, phone, email, and you can always book through the website as well. Um and there'll be a lot more going on to coming up to where people will be able to join through uh, certain messagings and things like that um, and memberships and stuff too. So stay tuned for all that. Super excited. <laughs> um, but there'll be a numerous ways to get a hold of me. But the main one right now is uh, ChristopherSilson.com because everything's already on there. And what type of services do you provide right now? Do you have the read-ins. Do you provide anything else? Yes, yeah, so I do the psychic medium readings, um, which you can do a personal group or party. Um, I also do transformational coaching, which we work on mindset and the universal laws. And I also do feng shui um, through diamond feng shui. And this is something that um, we, uh, we use for our environment because our environment's a very big and strong thing for ourselves that would create us create better um, harmony and helps us with our career and there's numerous things that it goes into and then of yeah. course energy therapy so that's another thing I do with a with Reiki and integrated energy therapy oh I love it I love it this has been amazing I you know I, I always love when you come on you always give us a wealth of information 
And I, you have such positive energy. I just want people to know that you have such positive energy is that when people have discussions with you and they're, they're really in tune with you, you know, you could feel your positive energy and you've done a reading on me and you were so on tune and you told me things that nobody knew, nobody knew. And you extended on those thoughts and, and things. And you, you talked about people in my life that I've never talked about, you know, with anyone else. Mm -hmm. So you're just amazing. You are truly, you have a gift and it, it is a beautiful gift. And I am so glad that we've met through this show. I'm so glad that you are on our podcast series and all the information you give is just amazing. So I encourage all our listeners to listen to all your podcasts because everyone is on a totally different topic and you will be blown away by Christopher's advice, his thoughts, his insights. It's just amazing. So once again, Christopher, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really enjoyed today's discussion and just thank you. You are just an amazing individual with a huge heart and a beautiful gift. Thank you so much. Now you have a great day. I'll you talk too. to you. Bye-bye.